One of my recent videos went over my opinion about the various tiers of Don't Starve Together players. The F tier consisted of players who literally just installed the game and are playing for the first time, while the cutoff for S tier was defeating 3 raid bosses before mid game. Wes is the weakest character in the game, and in this video I'll talk about how to be a good Wes when you're playing with others. Before we start, a quick character overview. Wes is a mime that is meant to be the most difficult character to survive as in the game. He has half the health of a normal character, half the hunger, and less than half the maximum sanity. Wes not only deals 25% less damage than the normal character, but he also chops and mines 25% less efficiently. This 25% debuff is definitely his worst weakness, since it makes fights take much longer which in turn costs more healing, armor, and sanity than other characters. Wes also has this unlucky mechanic where more hounds will spawn on him during hound waves and lightning will strike him more often. He also overheats and freezes faster than other characters, and he is penalized by the effects of sleep inducing items more harshly. Those are his downsides. Now let's take a look at his upsides. Since Wes uses items less efficiently than other characters, certain items in the hands of Wes use less durability compared to when used by other characters. So instead of 100 swings of a dark sword, Wes gets 125 uses of the weapon. He can also manipulate his sanity quite easily since it's so ridiculously low. His main upside is his ability to craft balloons at no cost other than 5 sanity as long as he has the pile of balloons item in his inventory. Easily his most useful balloon is the speed balloon. When above 66% durability, the speed balloon will increase the player's movement speed by 30%. When the durability drops below 66%, it will give a 20% speed increase until the durability drops below 33%, in which case the balloon will only boost the player's speed by 10%. The other reason speed balloons are useful is that they act as silent flares. If a speed balloon is released when it has more than 0% durability, then it will float into the sky. While it is doing this, a speed balloon icon will appear at the location on the map for all players. His other balloons are not as useful. Normal balloons deal 5 area of effect damage if struck by something. Party balloons simply restore sanity at a rate depending on how many players are in the area of effect. The inflatable vest eliminates the negative effects of drowning, and the balloon hat provides lightning and a little rain protection. So that's a summary of West that you can basically get off of the wiki. Now let's talk about the guide on how to be a good West, something that you won't find on the wiki. West has some major downsides. His 25% weaker attacks and low HP mean you're going to be at a huge disadvantage in combat, and his low sanity means you're going to have to either acquire sanity restoring items or be prepared to fight nightmare creatures a lot. Because of this, it is unsurprising that the easiest way to be a good Wes is to rush tame an ornery beefalo. I go over why an ornery beefalo is really good for Wes in one of my other videos called Beefalo Taming is OP. Wes has one advantage over every other character in the early game, which is his speed balloons. So when you spawn in, immediately make a speed balloon and start collecting resources. After you have a bunch of twigs and grass, you want to head to the mosaic biome, which is pretty much always near spawn. If you haven't found flint, finding flint in the mosaic should be really easy. Craft a pickaxe and start mining gold veins and picking up gold you see on the ground. You want to walk away with at least 11 pieces. After you have your 11, now go and search for beefalo. On your way, you want to cut down two fully grown trees so you can make a science machine and have two logs left over. You also want to continue to pick grass and twigs along the way. You also want to hammer pig houses along the way, get at least three. And all this time you want to be using your speed balloons, so once your balloon goes to zero, drop it and craft another. Once you've found the beefalo, plop down the science machine, craft a beefalo bell, and start taming it. I made a guide on how to tame a beefalo, so if you're new to beefalo taming, watch that. I would recommend taming it with food for the first day, and then riding it for the rest. While Wes is the worst character in the game, a Wes on a beefalo is one of the best characters in the game. Riding a beefalo gives Wes a 63% speed boost, which means you'll be faster than every other character. Beefalo have 1000 HP, block 100% of pretty much all types of damage, and passively regenerate HP over time. This means you don't have to spend any time or resources acquiring more armor or healing yourself from enemies. Untamed Beefalo also deal 34 damage per hit, which is slightly less than Wes would be doing using a tentacle spike, and unlike the spike, Beefalo don't have a limit to the number of times they can be used to attack. While riding a Beefalo allows you to take on any role as Wes, if you're playing with others, Wes will be the most effective as a hybrid scout and support character. Your beefalo's speed and HP is good for most fights, but 34 damage isn't that much if you're trying to take down tougher enemies. Your beefalo also can't really chop trees or mine rocks, and Wes does this slower than anyone, so you probably want to leave this to other characters who excel at this, such as Maxwell and Woody. So while you can assume the role of Monster Slayer, 
If you're fighting enemies with others, you should focus on supporting your teammates first and fighting second, because even normal characters like Wilson with a handbag hit way harder than your untamed beefalo. So if you're fighting a boss with other players, you should try and keep the boss's aggro on you rather than them. Since you're way faster than everyone else, it'll be easier for you to dodge the boss's attack. And if it does hit you, it won't even matter as long as your beefalo doesn't die, since it'll eventually regenerate all its HP. So use your super speed to try and get the first and last hit on the boss, so that they'll target you instead of your heavy hitting teammates. Since fighting with a beefalo doesn't require any equipment slots, you will also have the responsibility of keeping your team safe from Charlie while you fight a boss. So don't use moggles when you have teammates with you. Instead, carry a lantern and keep it close to 100% so your team has the maximum amount of light to work with. If you're playing with more advanced players, you can also support your team in early battle by giving them speedy balloons. The speedy balloon lasts for 2 minutes. A 2 minute speed boost will definitely make bosses easier. As a support character, you can do things that really help your team outside of battles. Since you're faster than everyone and can run straight through things like the swamp and even fields of hound mounds, you're in the best position to do things like create maps and gather the chess pieces. One of the great things about blocking 100% of damage and regenerating health is that beefalo allow you to pick cactus and spiky bushes without any cost. So I will dig up spiky bushes and pick cactus when I see them. Cooked cactus flesh restores 15 sanity and 1 HP. This allows me to eat things like raw meat and cooked monster meat since a single cooked cactus basically negates all the negative effects of eating either. Since you'll be on the move a lot, eating cooked monster meat and cactus is a great way to give you days of hunger without having to stop. I wouldn't go into dangerous areas like the swamp or killer bee biomes until my beefalo has been taming for at least 5 days. After 5 days, you'll be able to ride your beefalo for well over a minute before it bucks you off. In the swamp, dismount your beefalo only in areas where you know that there are no tentacles and away from the merm houses. The paths that go through the swamp never have tentacles under them, so that's a safe place. The same is true for turf around sinkholes. If you have to dismount on questionable ground, Use your sanity meter as an indicator whether a tentacle is near. If you come across any fellow travelers, be a good support character and give them a speedy balloon. Unfortunately, half the time your teammates won't even know what a speedy balloon is, so if you drop it in front of them, they'll just let it float away. However, experienced players will know how to pick it up. For inexperienced players, just hand it to them and they'll most likely figure out what it does after they equipped it. As mentioned before, speedy balloons not only give a temporary speed boost, but they also function as silent flares. So instead of having to craft flares, if you want to let everyone know where a certain location is at, just craft a speedy balloon and drop it. Unlike the regular flare though, it is silent, so you need to make sure you tell everyone in chat when you drop the thing. In addition to supporting your team with speedy balloons, another cool perk about Wes is his ability to become insane at any time. Making any of his balloons will cost him 5 sanity, and since his max sanity is only 75, he can go from full to zero in seconds, whenever he wants. Couple this with the fact that Beefalo can pretty much fight shadow creatures indefinitely, and Wes can assume the role of Nightmare Fuel Farmer. But really, your primary goal in the early game will be to explore the map. So explore it, find a good location, and if you're going solo, set up your base. I like to base near Dragonfly since there's good resources like Tumbleweeds and Cactus, but also because Lava Pools provide far greater heat for Thermal Stones than a Star Collar or Campfire, and it costs nothing to maintain. Rushing the ruins is something that you can definitely do as Wes on a beefalo. Since beefalo get better and better the longer you ride them, it's better to wait towards the second half of autumn before you rush the ruins. It's okay to explore the caves earlier, and it's also very possible to ruins rush with a beefalo earlier. However, I just don't see any real benefit in rushing the ruins with a beefalo super early. The main thing is that you get the ruins loot before the caves start to freeze and pour rain once winter hits. So attempt ruins rushing in the second half of autumn. By this time, the beefalo has been taming for about 10 days already. This means that you'll be able to ride it for more than 2 minutes without it bucking you off. Moving at super speed for 2 minutes will allow you to basically travel from one end of the map to the other, and it'll also allow you to simply run away from any of the dangers in the ruins that you don't feel like dealing with. I would ideally take a full stack of twigs as well as a bunch of cactus meat and a few logs so I can keep my sanity up since I don't want to always be fighting nightmare creatures on top of whatever else I'm dealing with while in the ruins. Since I will be off the beefalo for extended periods of time to mine statues, cooking a few steamed twigs is a great idea. Steamed twigs give your beefalo 100 hunger, which will make your beefalo continue to tame for one third of an entire game day, even if you're not riding it. This really comes in handy because in the ruins, you will spend a bunch of time off your beefalo in order to open chests and mine statues. Wes can do some pretty neat things when rushing the ruins in a group. For starters, he can make everyone faster by both giving them speedy balloons and freeing up their hand slot by providing them light. He can also easily flare different locations of the ruins with speedy balloons, which makes coordinating and helping people find landmarks easier. 
If you got friends, you can play the role of speedy support character by drawing the attention of all the clockworks and using your super speed to easily dodge their attacks, which frees your team up to mine the statues. Against the Ancient Guardian, your speed allows you to dodge him at much shorter distances than your teammates require, so you are able to continue attacking him for longer, which in turn draws his aggro to you so your teammates don't have to worry about getting hit. Your super speed allows you to just outrun Shadow Split Monkeys and Nightmare Creatures until they are off screen, so you can simply run right through the ruins and the wilds even if the Nightmare Cycle is at its peak. Finally, if you're playing with teammates who can't outrun Shadow Split Monkeys, you can keep them safe by running first into the monkeys to get their aggro, and then outrunning the monkeys off screen away from your teammates. After you're finished in the ruins, return to your base with a star collar, and you and your teammates will be all set for winter. Around 20 days after you start taming your beefalo, it'll fully tame as an ornery, which means you can now deal a respectable amount of damage while you support your team against whatever you're up against. At this point, nothing in the game outside of bosses should be a threat to you. So yeah, that is in my opinion how to be a good Wes. In battle, you're there to support your heavy hitters by drawing the enemy's aggro away from your allies providing light during night and in caves, as well as dealing decent damage. Outside of battle, you're there to explore the map, assemble the shadow pieces, give out speedy balloons, ping areas of interest, as well as acquire resources like cactus and nightmare fuel. Once your beefalo fully tames, being a good west becomes much easier. And that's it for the video. Like always, thanks for watching, take care, and have a great day.